So thank you for this nice saver and giving us the possibility to exchange this and this is Gurudev's wish. So we will read today some parts of the last verses of Vilap Kusumanjali. So maybe you should have some paper because Raguna Das is weeping his last words. It's tremendous. But I thought it would fit to the situation. Always when a nice devotee is leaving, somehow we are connected with this feeling. How it will be when we will go. So in Raghunath is the, the role model for us. Of course, also in this last and especially in this last moments. So I want to read some parts of the last verses from 101 to 104. 101 to 104. But not all, just some parts. So I will start with 101. O Isha, Goddess, the Goddess of Fortune cannot attain even a drop of the beauty of the tips of your lotus-like foot nails. If you do not bestow the gift of your audience to my eyes, then what is the use of this life? It's just burning in a forest fire of sorrow. O Isha, Goddess, the Goddess of Fortune cannot attain even a drop of the beauty of the tips of your lotus-like foot nails. If you do not bestow the gift of your audience to my eyes, then what is the use of this life that just burns in a forest fire of sorrow? If anyone wants to make a comment, share something, then please do not mind to interrupt. It should be in the flow, of course. Suniti so, Didi, you want to say something for this? <laughs> I'm very excited that you chose this verse and I'm very uh, eager to listen more. <laughs> so we go on with verse 102. O Varuru, nicely tight girl, thus I somehow spent this time here aspiring after oceans of nectar. 
I somehow spent this time here aspiring after oceans of nectar. Now, if you are not merciful to me, then what is the use of my life? What is the use of my living in Braj? And even Krishna to me. O Varoru, nicely tight girl. Thus, I somehow spent this time here aspiring after oceans of nectar. Now, if you are not merciful to me, then what is the use of my life, my living in Braj, and even Krishna to me? Explanations from Srila Anandadas Babaji Kijai. Sri Raghunadas does not want to maintain his miserable life anymore without seeing Swamini. Swamini reveals herself to him and says, Tulasi, you have introduced yourself as my maidservant. Can I now reject you? Surely you will get to see me. These words illuminate Sri Raguna Dasa's heart with the light of hope. Then, when Swamini disappears again, he suffers intolerable transcendental agony. If you don't grant me the right to serve you, then what's the use of this scorching life? It is as if Swamini then asks, How have you spent no, how have you been staying alive all this time? Sri Raghunada says, Listen, O oh nicely tight Swamini. Do you think that I blissfully spent this time? With great difficulty, I was able to pass this time. Hope was my only support. Like cooling drops of nectar that soothed my burning heart. Does anyone want to make a comment on this? Radhe Radhe, my dears. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, to everybody here from Vrindavan. Where we really can feel the mercy in every moment and where we have, we, we, we can be happy all together 
that we this whole mercy means it's for everybody. It's like what Mahaprabhu is showing in the Audari Alila. Audariya means generosity, and that is mercy. Like there is no restriction, everybody can come in the boat of mercy. And um, this is our hope, because we depend on that mercy. And the only thing what we need for this is an intense desire an intense, intense desire to go on this boat of mercy and to cross the ocean of misery. This is really so wonderful that Radha is giving us this opportunity in this life. And uh, mercy reveals everything. We don't need anything else than mercy. And everybody gets the mercy. There's nobody, nobody, no one is, is, is driven out here. Everybody gets it. You only have to desire it. That's the only thing you have to do. Desire this mercy and it will come. It will come. And the thing of mercy is, it descends. You cannot ascend to mercy. Mercy descends to you. So, <laughs> what happens is, we are waiting, sitting, praying, doing bhajan for this mercy to really manifest in front of your eyes. And if that mercy manifests in front of your eyes, this is Rupa, Rupa Mantra. Because she is the key point of everything. That's why we are called Rupanugas. Rupanuga means we are totally dependent on mercy. We don't need qualifications, nothing for this. Only the intense desire. Radha Radha. Radha Radha. Radha Radha. Someone else? I just saw that the answer from Swamini, it's so interesting because she says, you was introducing yourself as my maidservant. So how could I reject you? And this is proving the point that we have to want. If we are firm, completely convinced that we don't want anything else, then to serve Radha, to serve the highest form of love, and this is our real position. If we feel this in the heart, we will get it. And Sri Rupa Goswami is confirming this. One of the nine special characteristics of Bhava Bhakti is Asabandha. Being bound with firm hope for attaining the Lord. In our case, Swamini. There is an ocean of nectar in that hope. That's such a very nice point. Even just in the hope, there is already an ocean of nectar. Even though we may feel completely helpless, completely without any uh, qualities, 
which actually is definitely my position. But do I realize that? In bodily consciousness, you don't have any quality to go in this realm of the highest love. But there is a verse in Bhagavad Gita who is just telling us how the material elements, yes, how the material elements uh, are in one line. It's starting with earth and it's going up to either and then there's coming you know this verse, Bhumiya apona lo vayu kam mano bhutya evacha ahankara itiya me bina prakritya ashtatha so the eight elements which are material the finest element is the false ego the grossest, the crossest element is earth so it's going like this and the finest element is always in the other elements included. The earth includes air and water and so on. So if you just think about this one moment, then you will realize that it's impossible for you because the false ego is in every element, also in the intelligence. It's impossible for you by your own endeavor to come out. This is just a logical conclusion of this verse. Because false ego is the finest material element and is included in all others, also in your intelligence. So by your intelligence it's not possible to come out. So what is the key to come out? The higher energy. The mercy of Guru and Radha. It's the only possibility. So this proves our endeavors will always fail if our endeavor is not just to get the mercy. If our endeavor is just to get the mercy because we are helpless, then we will succeed. And this hope is an ocean of nectar. Because this is freeing us from all self-endeavor. We don't need any qualities. Radharani says in another verse that whoever takes shelter by my feet, he is exactly high, how I want him. No quality needed. Whoever is taking shelter by me, he is exactly like I want him to have. That's it. That's an ocean of nectar. Radharani's mercy There is another example here Udavadas hopes to see the divine couple with their girlfriends This tie of hope is even tighter in the stage of Brahma than in the stage of Rati. And it culminates in Mahabhav. The maidservant's tie of hope is 
indescribable. They cannot give up this hope even if they are consoled in visions, dreams, or in Smarana. The nectarian aspiration for Sri Radha's service is permanently seated in the heart of the practicing devotee. Sripad Prabhupada Ananda Saraswati has written in Radhara Sudhanidhi 86 O Sri Radhe Young Lady Love of the Arbors I desire the most astonishing rasa of your maid service which is a festival of constant love at every moment and which is attained by each of the adolescent girls of Braj by your merciful clans alone. By your merciful clans alone. Shri Radhike Mai Videhi Kripa Valokam. Please throw this merciful glance on me. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, I said. When I look at my own unworthiness, my mind becomes upset. But still, your attributes make me eager for you. When I see you in dreams, visions and smarana, then I think I will also attain you personally. My life is also almost over. Who can survive this trashing? O merciful mistress of mine, hear my anguish. I can't tolerate any more. Hear my final prayer. I have nothing more to say. I cannot find any more words. If, despite all my misery, you will still not give me your mercy, then what is the use of my life? 
of my living in Braj or even of Krishna to me? Why should I continue to live without your mercy? So much time has passed. Radhe, Radhe. I just wanted to add something which just came like a flash to me is um, the, the mercy. Raghunath Das Goswami is saying this. So uh, you can see that for the mercy, you have to pray every moment. Not that you get the mercy and that's it. No, you have to pray all the time for it. All the time we have to pray for this mercy. And that's actually bhajan. Yeah. This is a real bhajan. When we are always ready to... not wanting to let anything anymore go in our consciousness, only this mercy. And that's the goal of life. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Jai Ho, this is the real bhajan. Feeling helpless, praying for the mercy all the time. In the case of Sadaka. Someone else want to add something? Not a yes, I find it very amazing that first uh, so much glorification of hope and actually that's explained that hope is the is the only support Raghunanda Goswami or Ananda Das Babaji. Maharaj, he was saying that hope is the only support, like cooling drops of nectar, that soothe the burning heart. So the hope, yes. hope hopefulness is very... Um, oh. Yes? Hopefulness is a very uh, uh, high... Um, ad attribute high high quality in bhakti, hopefulness. Sometimes we say it's a hope against the hope, and it's the one of the highest uh, qualities in one devotee who has reached the level of uh, constant aspiration power. The drops of hope are like the cooling drops of on on the on the burning heart we had the subject of the burning heart the other day also the burning heart is the quality of somebody who's always in the separation mood like chida rupa goswami or ravamadas goswami but the hope the hope is cooling it's like a fire that is always burning, burning, burning. And then some drops come again, the drops. Oh, there's some hope. But it seems now here in, in, in the following sentences, he, he is losing his hope. He is like, or she is saying, oh, Swamini, now please be kind. And he also, uh, she says, it's not right to tell you about my misery, but today, <laughs> today I'm just, I have to tell you, now I need the mercy. So it's really interesting because we are praying or she's praying for the mercy and she is hopeful, but at the same time she says, I have no other uh, chance than 
telling you about my misery. So it's an interesting, I'm just observing and I'm asking also all the devotees to help me maybe how to, you know, it seems that hope is the highest quality, but somehow now it becomes hopeless. I don't have anyone else but you. So I guess it's not the real hopelessness, but it's some kind of ecstasy because otherwise it's not possible. So I want to put this question to all of you and uh, listen something. Is this real hopelessness or is this ecstasy? I guess, as you said, it's the ecstasy. It is said that this uh, distance from Swamini is needed that you get this uh, rati. So if you are not thrown from one wave up and down, if this is not happening, how you want to feel that intense desire and how you want to express that. It's like when Swamini, I mean, of course she will always meet her lover but sometimes even she is hopeless and fully in this ecstasy so I think it's the mercy of Swamini's hopelessness which is reflected in the hearts of the maidservants to some extent I don't need anything. If you are not merciful to me, I think this is the stage where we all want to reach. No more, it's like you are on heroin. Heroin is the highest drug. We can all understand, Swamini is the highest drug, heroin, our heroin. <laughs> it's the highest drug, even one shot and you cannot come away from it, right? So no more, when somebody wants to get rid of heroin, he's taking something else, some other drug. So like Gurudev always say, choose your madness. We have to choose our drug, heroin, nothing else. Our Swamini, she is our drug, nothing else. We are not satisfied with anything else. We want to stay on that, always. I think it's a nice reflection because what is the lowest in the material world is the highest in the spiritual world. So heroin is the highest drug. Even Krishna is addicted. Doravani, <laughs> if you pronounce heroin differently than it's heroin, She's also yes. our heroine. 
Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. I just remember uh, Anantadas Babaji used the words addiction, like a main quality for attaining Rasa Darshan. Because in this addiction, so other qualities are present automatically, especially passion. Actually, we can translate strong desire, burning desire, loba. And uh, we can see here from Raghunath's words how he is addicted. It's not ordinary attraction to Radharani. It's not ordinary love for Radharani. It's not ordinary prema, rati, pranaya, raga. Anurag, no, he is completely addicted. And he is infusing his addiction in the hearts of Sadaka. Oh. It's just short sharing. He is the greatest dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Radhe. Radhe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my dear sisters, to give me these drugs, sharing these drugs with me, making me addicted more and more. Srila Raghunadas is going on. Not even for a moment. Will I go near that impure place where a proud hypocrite worships Govinda alone without worshipping his most expert lover Sri Gadhava Radha whose glories are sung by the Vedic scriptures and great sages like Narada Muni, who carries the Veena. That is my solemn wow. Here is the proof. A religion person couldn't say such things. Never. Only if you are completely out of any kind of Aishwarya, then you can talk like that. Otherwise, you would have fear. <laughs> that you make some offense. But as we know, it's not the words. It's the real feeling which counts. So he's completely crazy for Sri Gandhava Rata. 
And he's telling not even a moment, I will go to this impure place where somebody wants to just serve Govinda alone. And this is his solemn wow, unmovable. It is said that the vow, the vow of Raghunath is like if you make a line in a stone, you hammer it. It's not removable. Blessed is the service of Sri Rata. Blessed is Srila Raghunadas Goswami's extraordinary loyalty to Sri Radha. By hearing and chanting his blessed words and by remembering his lotus feet, the heart of the practicing devotee can also become centered with the fragrance of this loyalty to Sri Radha. Radha Nishta. I just remembered when I was talking with Gurudev in some situation of my life it was very hard to chant and I asked what is the most important if I have no energy, what should I try to keep up? And he said, Here, Vilap Kusumanjali and Radhara Sudanidi. Here, from Srila Raghunadas and Rupa Goswami. Actually, to be honest, I didn't believe. After my experience in ISKCON, I was doubtful. There you have to chant your 16 rounds and all this. I don't want to go further in that, but I had some doubts because of my experience. But then I was going on just hearing at least one verse of these books and it really kept me over the waterline. <laughs> so it's really like this, if we hear these prayers from Raghunadas, if we hear from Rupa Goswami, we will be automatically become addicted. And Radha Nishta will come in our life. Sri Raghunata says, O Rathe, you are an ocean of causeless mercy. I am also worthy of your mercy. So why? 
why he is thinking like this. For I have no one else in this world but you. It's a very nice explanation in one, in one line here. I am also worthy of your mercy, for I have no one else in this world but you. That's the qualification. There is no girl as sad as I am. Thus, Sri Gaurasundara's grace was fully manifest in Srila Raghunadas Goswami. Sri Haripachila sings, O oh, nicely tight Radhe, I am praying to your feet. My desire is inexhaustible. There is no limit to the nectar ocean of my aspirations. And I dived into its waves just once. Somehow I have spent all this time on the bank of Radakund in great sorrow and difficulty. Depending on your mercy, I am crying and crying. If you are not merciful to me now, then tell me, what is the use of my staying in Braj? Curses on me for staying alive. My body burns in the poison of the black snake of separation from you. So then, what is the use of even Sri Govinda to me? O Kripamai, merciful girl, if you are not kind upon this suffering girl, then what is the use of all these lamentations and all my service to your lake for such a long time? Srila Raghunathas is the embodiment of separation from Sri Radha. Again, Sri Raghunathas is the embodiment of separation from Sri Radha. Suni TTT, I have one question to you. 
Srila Raghunadas is called Tulasi Manjari and Rati Manjari. Why she has these two names as Manjari? I think this is uh, quite common that they have different names. I am just uh, reading also the Gano Deepika uh, book. It is like Srila Rupa Goswami was revealing uh, some of the you know, identities of the spiritual realm. In this book, different friends, different girl maidens. So they have different different names. Also, I heard sometimes Banu Mati is also a name of Rati Manjari, or some say they, you know. I think in the end that it must be uh, realized in Bhajan. But I heard from our Gurudev, very nice. In Rindavan, how he was explaining the connection between Tulsi and Rati. Because he said that Tulsi gives Rati. So I think, oh my God, yeah, that's why we worship Tulsi Manjaris. Because they give Rati. We, we would like to have this Rati, this kind of addiction, or as you called it, so nicely. The worship of Tulsi Manjaris is so dear to Radha Mohan because they are so fresh and so tender and they smell, I, they smell extraordinarily good. They are very attracting. So like this also, the Tulsi Manjari and the Tulsi attitude is so fresh and so but like innocent and fully surrendered. And so I think in this way, my personal meditation is that Tulsi Manjari is uh, so sweet and so attractive because she is embody me, em embodying this Rati. And then I, I just play in my mind and my consciousness with these connections between uh, Rupa and Rati. And Rati gives the form, right? So first we go to Tulsi, we take our, we give our, uh, we water Tulsi, we give the leaves to Radha Mohan, we do our services, we clean. And we offer the, the Tulsi Manjaris, we worship her, and then she gives Rati, she gives this attachment, she gives this feelings. Because when you cl come close to Tulsi, you have to get Rati. When you come close to this feelings of selfless service and full dedication, you get attachment, you get addicted to this kind of love. I was also just thinking when we were speaking about heroin and addiction so nicely today that uh, I remember one song of my teenage years. It was called Love is Like Oxygen. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I think you all remember some of it. <laughs> it, uh, it also fits nicely with this meditation that we need this. To see Manjari's mercy to, to live. And we need this Rati to live. And uh, so in this way, I connect Tulsi Manjari with Rati Manjari, or, you know, all the different... Because the Manjari is actually the servants of Shimati Radhika when they come so into this oneness with her feelings and everything, they are non-different from Swamini's feelings. 
in von Swamini's ecstasy of her Rati and her her desire to to please Krishna and to serve Krishna in such a degree that he forgets who he is. And that is the best that ever happens to him. <laughs> he wants to forget who he is. Like all of us, we also want to forget our, you know, I mean, at least I cannot speak for all of you, but for myself, I often want to forget my human nature and forget my human identity. And I want to be fully in this madness, in this addiction, in this, uh, you know, love is like oxygen state. Because I'm a crazy for love, right? Uh, even if I'm a human, I am crazy for love. But best is if I am a Manjari, I want to be crazy for Swamini's service. And for Guru Manjari's service, uh, first of all. So even Krishna is hungry for this because he also wants to forget all his duties as God. <laughs> and that's the highest, highest service to give. So I think that's uh, my uh, meditation about uh, Rati Manjari or Tulsi Manjari giving this madness, giving this uh, attraction, giving this affection and this um, blessings of her service. That's why we love and that's why uh, Gurudev says, even if you cannot chant and just uh, listen to the madness of this girl, <laughs> And then you will be mad again, and then the holy name will come more easy. It will come natural again, because sometimes I have also, if I may comment on this, uh, uh, seen that the holy name, if you are not in Vrindavan, we have some problems to connect on a deep level, and we feel uh, it's uh, useless, or it's not uh, easy, or it's uh, no taste. But actually, when this madness comes of Tulsi Manjari's mercy, then the holy name again, it's so beautiful and full of taste and juicy. But only comes, I guess, it's somehow also this uh, test when we have the good uh, feelings for it, right? If we keep the feelings of this duty and this, uh, mm, I have to do it, I must do it, and then the taste is a little bit different, right? Although it also works, it works because also when we push ourselves to chant, after some time also purification takes place. That we have all noticed. But the best for myself is when the, the rati is there in a natural, uh, natural feeling and the natural surprise of what the holy name, what the Radharani will give, what uh, Uru Manjari will give in the heart. It's like a surprise. It's like a anxiousness for the eagerness to, to listen uh, what is coming and can I hear it and can I perceive it? That is only live sharing on this, the holy name. I hope that is uh, something, uh, Radha Radha, I would like to listen from somebody else. They, I, I just wanted to um, add something to what uh, Sumiti Didi was sharing about uh, Tulsi Manjri and uh, Rati Manjri. Um, just while listening to her, something came to me. I once heard that also in, in the Indian culture or in any, uh, I think, culture, somebody who is very close to us, we give a nickname, right? So we have Shatsi in German. <laughs> <laughs> Happy in English, Spatzi in German again. So, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami, in his spiritual identity as Rati Manjari, is very dear to Radharani, very dear. So, that's why she also got this nickname Tulsi. And uh, Sunidhi Didi was sharing about the meaning of what Tulsi also means. No Guru just talks about the Tulsi, our Tulsi plan that she brings bhakti. So she introduces us to bhakti. She's very tender. And also there is this song which we sing no, uh, in the arati. Uh, namo namo tulasi Krishna priyasi. And there is one line, koro nija dasi. Mm. Make me an eternal dasi or make me a rindavan vasi. And who else then? 
Raghunath Das Goswami is showing us how to become a Nijadasi of Radharani. So I just wanted to briefly add on this. Thank you. Radha. Thank you very much. So nice. Radhe, Radhe. Also one time, Ananda Das Babaji said something to this and he said uh, that when, when we all the all the devotees have tulsi tulsi around the neck, so they are protected. And uh, this is for to inspire the love in the sadak there, mm -hmm. to inspire the love and the creed, and to come uh, and to get more and more greedy. And that is that is also a kind of uh, a kind of function of tulsi. You have tulsi and to to honor her and that Tulsi, like it's very, very dear to Radha, like Gopinath said so beautifully. And that's why the Raga Bhaktis, the meaning of the Raga Bhakti, for the Raga Bhaktis to have Tulasi means to develop more greed for Radha. Mm. Radha, Radha. 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 <laughs> Someone wants to add more? Otherwise, I will go on reading. Falling on the bank of Radhakund, Sri Raghunath weeps out of great separation from his mistress. He knows not how to save his life anymore. Day and night the river of his burning devotion swells, being filled up by the rains of grief and flowing ever more forcefully towards the nectar ocean of Sri Radha's lotus feet. Jai Ho. We may have a feeling of want when something small is missing in our lives. And when we get something small, we may feel fulfilled. But when we miss something tremendous, no peace and satisfaction can be felt unless and until we have gotten the whole thing. Sri Raghunadas Goswami's eagerness and hankering for his beloved deity stands before us like the peak of the Himalayas. Somebody was already in the Himalayas? <laughs> we know how hard to get there, <laughs> how high they are. His eagerness and hankering for his beloved deity is standing before us like the peak of the Himalayas as the greatest example. An insignificant living entity cannot find any means to reach that high summit.
I think this is a very nice example, but if you want to go to the highest Himalaya mountains, you need somebody who knows the way, right? You cannot just go, go there. You need somebody who's really, who really knows the way, the weather and all these circumstances in which, what kind of circumstances is a good moment to go from one tent to another tent and then up to the peak. So you need somebody, you cannot do it just by your own, just as you think you could do it, you will die. So you need somebody who knows, who's expert. So who's this expert? It's Srila Raghunadas Goswami. A person who does not practice any bhajan cannot possibly fathom Srila Raghunadas Goswami's anguish of love in separation. At every moment, new waves, or, uh, sorry, at every moment, new waves of ever increasing eagerness roll the river of his heart. He is not able to tolerate the pangs of separation from Sri Rata anymore for even a moment. Certainly, Radharani may sometimes respond to the anguish of separation. which the loyal maid servant goes through. But the response will be momentarily. Seeing Swamini for just a moment makes the darkness of separation that comes later seem even more deep. It is then as if Sri Raghunath's love-scented ears then hear the following words. Tulasi, I am very close by. Where are you lamenting like this? How much Raguna desires to hear that nectar mocking voice, but the wind of his stuttering life airs make it vanish again. In this way, his desire to see her increases more and more. O Kripa Mai Swamini, O merciful mistress, I am such a sad girl. If you don't bestow your mercy upon me, then what is the use of all my lamentations? I have lived by your lake, Radakund, for so long, serving it.
If you don't reveal yourself, then what is the use of all that service? This miserable and suffering person bows down humbly at her lotus feet, considering them to be the only goal of his life. And he continuously weeps loudly and pitifully begs, May the Queen of Brindavan be merciful to me and allow me in her own party engaging me in her direct service. In his lamentation, Sri Raghunath submits his own pitiable condition to Swamini's lotus feet. I think this is another key point. Raghunath submits his own pitiable condition to Swamini's lotus feet. I was reflecting on that many days in my trying to be a devotee I was not really honest to myself so how can I be honest to someone else if I am not honest to myself So when I don't understand where I am standing, how can I cry for help? If I think everything good, I'm chanting, I'm doing bhajan, I'm yeah, more or less, everything is all right. No, I have to open First of all, my position to myself, understand that I'm completely helpless. Whatever I endeavor, there will be no hope if I don't take the lotus feet of Guru Manjari and Radharani. If I don't take the position on the lotus feet, There will be no hope. I cannot help myself. So Srila Raghunath submits his own condition to Swamini's lotus feet, saying, For a long time I have stayed in your kund, serving it. If you don't reveal yourself to me, that what will be the result of this service, uh, then what will be the result of this service? How dear the Kund is to you? What is the use of my service to the Kund? without becoming the object of your mercy. So that's the point. What is the use of our service if we don't become the object of the mercy of Radharani? When I saw the sweetness of your lake, I developed a desire to serve you. And in his Radakund Ashtakam, 
He also glorified the sweetness of that lake so much. But when he feels the pain of separation, he says, When I am without my beloved, the kund looks like the gapping mouth of a tiger to me. Ordinary people cannot easily understand what confidential sentiments are hidden in these extraordinary words. With great humility, Sri Raghunath says, Ha, Kripa Mai! You are the embodiment of boundless grace, and I am just a suffering girl. Suffering people are the objects of your compassion. Therefore, show me your quality of compassion and grant me your devotional service. At the end of his Brema Boja Maranda, the honey from the love lotus, his prayer. Srila Raghunada says, This person bows down to you, holding a straw between his teeth. Please revive this miserable wretch by sprinkling him with the nectar of your service. A merciful person does not abandon even a wicked soul who takes shelter of her. Therefore, O Gandaviki, please don't abandon me. When Sri Raghunath reaches the pinnacle of devotional love, he becomes this humble. In Brihat Bhagavat Amrita, Srila Sanatana Goswami has written, Humility becomes manifest when Brahma reaches its ripened stage. Since the gopis love Krishna the most, they are also the most humble. In the same way, Brahma becomes manifest when humility culminates. In this way, love and humility are each other's cause and effect. Cool. Avani Bhai, I have a question. Yes? Yes, you can ask. I don't know if I can answer, but someone will answer. <laughs> yes, the whole. Um, I try to understand, in a way, the whole context of this uh, separation feelings, <clears throat> which are so culminated here. And I want to maybe share with, with you who, how you perceive it. Because 
<clears throat> then when Raghunath Goswami is, is, is lamenting, then Sri Radhika's words are coming, Tulsi, I'm very close by. Where are you lamenting like this? And why is it where? Where are you lamenting like this? Why is it where? Where are you? Are you? Are you there? Are you here? Where are you? Why is Tuls, Why is uh, Swamini asking this? And then I was asking myself. <clears throat> because here it says that Raghunath wants to hear her, her mock, nectar mocking voice. Nectar mocking. Mocking means to make kind of joke. Eh? Mm. Mocking, to make a, a, a joke. So I try to understand where are you lamenting like this? Why? How is Swamini saying this? And in, in which mood she is saying this? And then it says, the wind of his stuttering life airs make it vanish again. The stuttering life airs, is this that he is like about to leave? Is that that uh, his life airs are just about to pass? Is that the situation? I want to have a little, little bit more uh, clarity about this. Nectar mocking voice of Swamini. Tulasi, I'm very close. Where are you lamenting like this? And his life is uh, stuttering. Is that he, he is uh, just leaving his body now? Or, you know, that is uh, something. Or is this actually perception of Ananda Das, Babaji Maharaj, that he, he li listens to this in his own meditation when he's reading the... Uh, meditating on, on, Rag on Tulsi Manjari's prayers, because we know that these are the last prayers before he left. Maybe somebody can uh, share on this? What I feel here is, so Tulsi is sitting, uh, Raghunath Das is sitting in the lap of Radha. And she is asking, where are you? Because how you cannot understand that I'm right behind you? Something like this I feel in this moment. You ask only somebody, where are you? You're seeing him in front of you, but where are you is, that means that moment of how you can be so in despair, I'm right with you, I'm right here, I'm right here. So where are you that you don't see this? Where are you that you don't feel it? Of course, Raguna Das Goswami is doing that for us. <laughs> <laughs> this is all a play for me. He's doing, he's showing us how difficult it is to be in Chitta Vritti, to be totally in focus with our mind totally one-pointed, not anymore in other, so many uh, projects, how we live over says and this and that, so many things around and here and there. And that is the point, what I feel here is that he's doing that for us, because we are all sitting in the lap of Radha. Mm -hmm. We are all sitting there. And I remember a little story from, from two young fishes in the water. And uh, they're swimming around, and then one fish asks another fish, the small fish, he says, hey, you know what? Show me where the water, do you know what is the, where the water, what is the quality of the water? What is the characteristic of water? And the other says, oh, you know what? I cannot, I cannot explain it to you. I cannot, I don't know. You have to ask somebody else. And I make it short, the story is a little longer, so I go to somebody, so-called navigator, <laughs> and they ask him, they, they, they're swimming like him in the water, and they're asking him, hey, you know what, I want to ask you where the water? And he said, 
hand. And what is the characteristic of water? And he looks over his glasses and says, are you stupid? You're all the time swimming in the water. <laughs> all around you is water. Every day you taste the water. So put instead of water, love. Put instead of water, Radha. She's always with us. Every moment, every second. But the thing is that it is, it is very difficult when our mind is not fixed. Then it's very difficult. But this is not that Raghunath Das Goswami has not the mind fixed. He has the mind totally fixed. And he's doing this in the last moment to show us. That's what I feel, my dear Suniti, that I, he, show, he, just, he wants to show us how difficult it is to be really totally focused in Radha. Adik Snare, one point, totally, completely Radha, nothing else, nothing else, only Radha, Radha. And then, yeah. Translation. Then it happens. Hmm? Then she's, when you always pronounce Radha, 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 it will not take a lot of time and you stand right in front of her. <laughs> Very I'm, nice explanation. I may add something to Raghunath Bhaiya's uh, beautiful realization. If you allow me just one minute. Um, nectar mocking voice of Swamini. What an intimate uh, exchange always happens between Swamini and Tulsi. I just remembered um, in the beginning of Vilapku Sumanjali, Swamini already starts playing and mocking a bit uh, our Tulsi, saying, Ah, oh, who, come, I join, I make you my gopi, I make you my sake, you know, come, no. And then uh, Tulsi Mandra says, No, no, I don't want to be. Gopi, I don't want to be your friend, I want to be your dasi. And then another way Swamini talks to Tulsi is like, I, why are you lamenting? Why are you crying like this? I just went for a few minutes. Why? I'm always, as Raghunath Bhaya says, uh, Swamini says, I'm always with you. Why are you crying like this? But this crying, as we know, in, as with Apkustumanjali, is a bouquet of lamentation, this constant oscillation between meeting and separation, which uh, Raghunath Das Swami is exposing in all these verses. And we always hear also how his life errors are choking, you know, he can't keep it anymore. It's so intense, you know. And um, at the same time, uh, he's always in the lap of Radharani, but he's showing us that we also belong there. And we have to understand that this is our true nature to be her Dasi. So I just uh, wanted to just a bit add on, on, on this uh, with Raghunath Bhaiya's beautiful uh, comments. And uh, thank you, Sudhididi, for this wonderful reflection. Yeah. It's really wonderful to you know, also think about these aspects of this Leela between uh, Raghunath and uh, uh, Rupa, uh, Prusi Manjri and, and Swami. Thank you. The life, our life will finish one day in this body. So we are training. <laughs> we are training for the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point, yes. We are training for the Olympics every day. Every day we should, you know, like when the sportsmen, they train every day and hard and hard just to get a stupid gold medal or whatever medal. <laughs> But this is the training from our side. It's just only Radha to focus on her and uh, don't get. We should always trying to totally be focused and not anymore in other things. And uh, that is what I because the Olympic Games I. This is Manovriti, you know, the different circles. <laughs> the different circles you see in the Olympic Games, that is Manovriti. <laughs> that is not Chittavriti. There is different. <laughs> I said that to Gurudev these days and he was laughing all the time. <laughs> That's why I want to repeat it with you. Uh, we have a lot of sharing still, but not officially like this. So Manovriti is 
the Olympic Games, <laughs> right? There's many projects and this and that. That's why there's so, so many circles, you see. But Chitta Riddhi is one, and in the Middle East also one, center point, that's right. That's it. Yeah. And the one who's helping us to get there is our Rati Manjari. Yeah. Guru Manjari, Rati Manjari, Rupa Manjari. That is Rupa Nuda. That is that. And she is showing us how to get gold. Everyone is a winner with rather. Yes. I just remember when Swamini is sitting on the lap of Krishna and she is missing Krishna. I think it's 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 very similar because Raghunath is showing us the pinnacle of everything practically, of the whole possibility, the whole tastes, the whole bhavas, and why he shouldn't give us this pinnacle also. So he's showing us this pinnacle also, and that's why he is talking like that. And of course, Swamini is uh, answering in a choking way. Like always, they are just joking there. This is play. It's a game. It's not like here in the material world, we always think everything is so serious and ooh. No, it's just a game of love. They are just making fun the whole time. And even with the time, they joke. <laughs> this is... Very nice. So, Niti, this is a very wonderful point here. Yeah, yes. Radhe? Radhe, Radhe. I also, I also want to thank you very much to Suniti for giving us a little bit back in this commentary when Radhika is really very nicely, sweetly joking words are addressing now Tulasi and Kaya. Tulasi, I am very close by. And she is speaking. You are not aware that I'm always close with you while you are lamenting. And the next sentence, where are you lamenting? You know, where are you lamenting? In Radhakund. How is it possible that you are lamenting on Radhakunda and you know that Radhakunda is not different from me? <laughs> <laughs> How you can lament so strongly if you know that I'm always here? So... <laughs> For me, this is also a very nice explanation. Not only sitting near Radhika, but also you are on Radhakun. A whole life you spent on Radhakun, rolling on the Radhakun. And you got so many beautiful realizations that all my intimate pastimes on Radhakunda. And you now found to lament on this place. No. <laughs> So I'm sorry, I just want to try this. <laughs> ah, beautiful. Yeah, oh, Wonderful. Good night. <laughs> and also one little thing. Also this where can mean that he, she is that he's in his sadak there, right? And not in his swarup in that moment. That's why she's here asking, where? Where are you? Why are you in your sadak there? Why are you not in your... Bah. Yes, it's also kind of message, why you fear? Just come. <laughs> yeah. You fear to leave this, this sadak. What's da, the problem? Da, 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 da. I'm here. It's like the father who is saying to the child, jump. I will catch you. Jump. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm very close by. So we...
come to the last verse, 104. O Pranaya Shalini, abode of pure love. The abode of pure love. Thus I am loudly crying, desiring to attain your mature loving service. holding your lotus feet to my heart. Which is burning out of intense agony. I am offering these lamentations to them as a bucket of flowers. May they be the cause of even the slightest satisfaction to you. Jai Shri Rati. Oh, and I want to share with you one more thing. I found, uh, uh, how do you say, a affirmation, no, a bestätigung. I found the the <laughs> confirmation. Confirmation, yeah. Because here in the after this, uh, after this last uh, prayer, she says in the next uh, paragraph, Tulasi Manjari is also very joking. You know, sometimes we think that, like you said, Godavani. It is so heavy and it is very uh, sober and it's very depressing that, uh, you know, Raghunath Das is now in his last prayers. But, you know, he's also joking in a way to understand this. In the next paragraph, he says, Oh, Swamini, what more can I say? And then she says something else, but then she says, So it's not that I need you so much. Mm -hmm. But you will also need me many times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Isn't> that really <laughs> something. <laughs> oh, if you think I need you, okay, that's uh, right. I need you, but you will also need me. So what kind of a relationship is this? Huh? <laughs> Amazing. This is the point. Swamini okay, is the point. Jai Shirati. Swamini is the mother of every soul, but this is not our rasa. This is just a fact. So it's not mentioned so much in the book of Srila Raghunadas Goswami, but some, sometimes you can read it because it's not the rasa. We want to be in rasa, not in tattva. But the tattva side is that the soul is the child of Radharani. So if you think about this, what is your relationship with your loving mother? Is this like, oh, my dear Swamini, what can I do for you? Or is it another way? It's love. It's just relaxed. It's, it's just because Radharani is love herself. It's not like a material mother. They may be um, a little bit different, <laughs> but Radharani is the, the, the love, pure love in person. So how it could be that, that way, like in the material world? No, it's, it's, it's so loving, jokingly. It's so stressful, sweet, sweet amazing. So, and I think we have to come in this understanding that it's just a natural, a very, very natural relationship. Nothing to fear. No Aishwarya. Aishwarya means fear. No fear. You are my mother. I'm here. 
But I want to serve you in Rasa. I don't want to see you as mother. You are my mistress. Yes, and it seems like he is switching. Like uh, Raghunath Baya said, I had the same feeling before. Switching in different uh, different uh, consciousness. Sometimes he is in the Sadaka Vish, on the Radha Kund, and it's dusty, and it's hot, and it's like the Govardhan is like a snake, and uh, Krishna is also not very interesting. <laughs> but... Uh, but then in, uh, uh, when he is in his uh, Svarupa Vesh, when he is in his Mandari Bhav and his uh, eternal identity, he says, Aswamini, I don't need you as much as you need me <laughs> to bring yes. you together with your lover, right? So it's yeah. very interesting uh, to observe these different uh, moods and um, to feel them and not to be stuck only on the human mental perception of what we call death or dying or uh, prayers of, of uh, intense uh, eagerness. It's very, very, very uh, interesting. And I would love to hear also Gurudev on this. Maybe we can also listen uh, from him. If you want to share this again with Gurudev, maybe. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about this all? Yes, we always want to hear what Gurudev is adding on this point. And, uh, there came just one more thing to my heart, my dears. That is, that when we speak about compassion, in normal language, in our normal conversation, we speak about the heart is full of compassion, or, you know, the compassion comes from the heart, this and that. We hear about the compassion so many times tonight, and uh, there's one thing. We might think, say that the heart is full of compassion, but in the case of Radha, all her body is full of compassion. So that is happening, and that means, like you said before, Govani, love. When we have love, when we have feel the compassion, the love, we don't fear anymore. For what? What should we fear? Mm. Nothing. There's nothing to fear. It's only to love. And if there's fear, there's no love. This is also true. When you're really in love, you don't fear. But as soon as you fear, love goes away. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Just... Um, one, one thing I wanted to say, uh, since this is the end of Vilapu Sumanjali and the last verses are showing the intensity of Raghunath's prayers, and actually the entire Vilapu Sumanjali is showing how much Swamini needs her manjaris. I like this very much, Suniti. Thank you so much. I, I think this was such a beautiful now uh, meditation that uh, actually he Raghunath Das Goswami is showing us how much the man mandris are needed, how much we can be of service. You know, we sometimes might think, oh, I am of no use, I cannot serve much. But she is always giving us opportunity to serve her. And Raghunath Das Goswami is showing it in all the verses, how much actually the mandris are needed for the pleasure of the Yuga Life sure. Yes. Rade. This is the reason why he addressing Radhika, O oh, Pranaya Shalini. Because in the stage of Prema of Pranaya, love, lo beloved and lover are feeling the same and no difference. So he is finishing Vilapa Kusumanjali with this addressing, O Pranaya Shal Shalini, you need me. I also need you, but you also need me. Only in this stage it is possible to say such kind of expressions. Yeah. So there is, 
वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग प्रणाया आई एम सॉरी I have to come little bit back on hundred one words, and he's addressing. Now I see. Thank you, Goravani. Thank you very much, Ensuniti. When he's addressing O E S H E, goddess, it's not Aishwarya. Any whiff of Aishwarya. You are the goddess of my heart. You are me, my beloved. But actually, he started this last four verses with this Ishe. You are my beloved Ishtadev. And the second verse, he is continuing. O Varoru. Now he sees his her beautiful form. Nicely tight girl. These tights are so beautiful that Krishna cannot resist to look at them, to sit on them. But I can also not resist, <laughs> <laughs> and you can also not resist to put me on your lap. So he is saying, "Var Varoru." It's amazing. <laughs> and then. In the hundred three words, he said, "Oh, now I meditate on your qualities, Kripa Mai. You are most merciful, girl. Like Raghunath said, all your poor, all your atom, on you, all your Mahabhava body is Kripa Mai. So I'm very happy. On hundred fourth year." Uh, verse to say that you are prana pranaya shalini, and there is no any difference in the love because Raghunata is drowning in Mahabhava, and he is completely made from Mahabhava. So he is meditating on Ishtadev, on the f- form, on the qualities. And now it is also lila, actually. Nam, rup, gun, and lila. So thank you very much. I'm sorry because I disturb you. Very <laughs> nice. Please disturb us more often. <laughs> I I was just thinking how to tell this one. Who is maybe not into this theme so much? So, if parents love each other very much, they want to expand the love. How they do this? They get children. So the souls are all expansions of the love of Radha and Mohan. And in this mood, we may understand what is our position. We are needed. Of course, we are needed because the parents wants us. They want to expand their love, so we are needed. Jai Shri Radha. Thank you very much, all sisters and brothers.